Hello everyone, and welcome to the second installment of my series covering the darkest MLP secrets. In the first episode, I introduced you to a few of the unsettling features in My Little Pony episodes that are often overlooked or missed altogether. In this video, I'll focus more on secrets that were a bit more forward in presentation. Together, we'll take a look at blatant representations of mental illness, the lure of suicide in the face of tragedy, confirmation of popular horror themes, startling cameos, and much, much more. So join me on this journey as we cover the strange and disturbing secrets that MLP has offered its viewing audience. Before we begin, I'd like to note that this project contains some MLP spoilers. So if you haven't seen the final episodes of the very last season, I'd encourage you to watch them first before continuing on. You have been warned. Number one, The Shining Twins. To kick us off, I chose one of the most interesting cameos I could find in the MLP universe that connects us directly to a cult classic horror movie. In the episode Where the Apple Lies, we're afforded a flashback that displays just how dishonest Applejack was in her younger years. The episode follows Applejack as her continual lying lands her and her immediate family in a heap of trouble. In a panning scene following Applejack and Granny Smith through the hospital, you can see two identical fillies standing at the end of the hall, dressed in similar attire, holding hooves. If you don't recognize them immediately, you wouldn't be alone. People who aren't familiar with classic horror movies might have just excused them as two twins in the wrong place at the wrong time. But, actually, the pair are cameos from a classic horror movie that was created in 1980 called The Shining. Without giving too much away, the twins in the movie were brutally murdered, and are shown in a chilling scene reaching out for friendship from beyond the grave. Standing at the end of the hallway, holding hands while hauntingly saying, come play with us. In the movie, only one person is present when the twins show up. However, in the MLP reenactment, there are a host of other ponies present. Personally, I have to wonder if their ghosts were seen by every pony, or just by certain ponies. But since no one seems to react, I may never be able to tell for certain. Either way, it's frightening enough to see them standing there, silently unacknowledged by every pony around them in the bustling hospital. Number two, Alicorn Gender Discrimination. This was something that I've been meaning to discuss for some time. As we all know, most Alicorns in the MLP universe are considered royalty. Even Twilight Sparkle had to undergo a personal transformation before being fully accepted as royalty herself. Usually, whenever an alicorn is shown, they're in a position of power and are followed, respected, and heralded by those around them. But there is a quick scene that caused sparks of outrage in the community, showing us something that is, to this day, extremely strange. In the episode Granny's Gone Wild, when Rainbow Dash and the Apple Family elders land in Las Pegasus, we see a male alicorn directing their hot air balloon towards a landing platform. He's clearly pictured having both a horn and wings, plainly marking him as an alicorn. Yet it seems like he's working a relatively low-paying job as an air traffic director. Now, this may have been a design flaw that simply slipped through the cracks during production, but, given the way that the male alicorn is shown up close for at least 8 seconds, make me think that it'd be impossible to miss, even if the art and animation team did make some sort of mistake. And, if they did mean for him to be shown here, then perhaps royalty holds some form of discrimination against male alicorns. While Celestia is sitting on a royal throne as a respected ruler, this male alicorn is working a menial job in Lost Pegasus. To me, that seems sorely unfair, leading this to be one of my less secretive secrets, but a disturbing one nonetheless. Number 3. Scootaloo Will Never Fly Many fans watched the Cutie Mark Crusaders valiantly struggle to earn their Cutie Marks season after season. And eventually, as the series drew to a close, we were allowed to see them finally reach their goal together. It was satisfying, and extremely encouraging, to see their journey finally come full circle. And then, to watch them help other ponies achieve a similar dream. However, there's one member of the Cutie Mark Crusaders whose personal issues never saw a resolution. Scootaloo. 
We watch her struggle to learn to fly over many episodes as she fights to keep up with her idol, Rainbow Dash, but never truly learns to take to the sky like most Pegasi. And hardcore fans may know this secret already, but for those of you who don't, I felt like it was very important to note. At an MLP panel during the year 2015, the creator of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Lauren Faust, told viewers that Scootaloo would never fly. Her reasoning behind that was to provide viewers with a character whose dreams may never be achieved. A pony who wouldn't be afforded a fairy tale ending, but rather a more realistic one. She mentioned, In a weird sort of way, I thought it would be sort of beautiful if she never got to fly, because everybody has dreams, you know? Everyone has dreams, but we don't get all of them. She wanted the story to follow Scootaloo as she finds happiness in other places, despite never reaching her goal. And in essence, that's all good and fine, but when you realize what Scootaloo wants to do with her life, her fate seems even more cruel. She'll never follow in Rainbow Dash's footsteps. She'll never take to the skies with the Wonderbolts, or otherwise. I don't know about you, but knowing her character, I believe she'd be crushed. Fans have theorized as to why Scootaloo can't fly. It's not a matter of willpower or even determination, but perhaps it's something far darker. Personally, I believe that Scootaloo's bone structure must contain certain osteo-abnormalities. She's able to beat her wings quickly, almost like a hummingbird or a bee, enabling her to hover but her wings just can't sustain lengthened flight. This is just another sad angle that paints her struggle in a whole new light. Number four, Spike was kidnapped. In the episode, Sweet and Smoky, we have a front row view of how dragon eggs are tended to through their infancy. The process is very, very important and everything has to be just perfect for the hatching to commence. Princess Ember even relays to Spike that the key to the dragon's hatching is heat, a heat that brings forth new life for the Dragon Empire. But if you recall, Spike himself wasn't born in the Dragonlands, but rather in Canterlot during Twilight's entrance exam. His egg is brought in on a cart lined with hay, and clearly there is no source of heat that would have been encouraging him to hatch or even aiding in keeping him alive for a longer period of time. Rather, Twilight is given the task of forcefully making him hatch using her own magic. The underlying question in my mind was always, where did he come from? And, more disturbingly, how did he get to Canterlot? We know that eggs have to be raised in the Dragonlands at the hatching grounds because the conditions for their birth are so specific. So how was it? that Spike's egg was so far from its home, and why? It's a strong possibility that Spike was kidnapped and brought to Canterlot, possibly with other dragon eggs, for the sole purpose of serving as a challenge for the unicorns taking the entrance exam. Whoever removed him from his original home deprived him of both a mother and a father figure and shifted the course of his future. Better yet, he was an infant when he was taken, a horribly sad situation that's far too disturbing to ignore. Number 5. Rainbow Spectra Any longtime MLP horror fan knows about the haunting story of the Rainbow Factory, a fan fiction that has captured millions and exposed them to the darker side of Cloudsdale's rainbow-making history. And while many believe that this idea is completely unconfirmed, I personally beg to differ. We're not given any sort of information that directly confirms the theory in the show, but there is a subtle clue that always caught my eye no matter how many times I watched the scene. In season one, there's an episode called Sonic Rainboom, where the main six tour the weather factory in Cloudsdale. During this tour, they pass through a room housing multiple pools of rainbow spectra. In this room, Pinkie Pie decides to dip her hoof in the mix and give it a taste test. Her expression changes after she licks her hoof, a devious look coming over her moments before the taste registers. But even then, the look in her eyes is still dark. After that, her face turns blue, her cheeks expanding as if she's going to be sick. Then it shifts to green, 
her eyes filling with fear and her teeth barring as if she's in personal pain. After that, it's as if her body disagrees with what she's chosen to consume, her face turning bright red as fire shoots from her mouth. Then, the final hue is a cloudy yellow as she shrieks and then cowers, the experience clearly having shaken her. She hoarsely whispers, spicy, eyeing the spectra with the same look of horror as she trembles. Then abruptly, she takes off, leaving her friends behind. Now, I don't know about you, but normally I believe Pinkie Pie would have laughed something like this off. Well, that is unless she sensed the seriousness of what she'd done and couldn't find a speck of humor in it. Was it possible that she tasted the countless lives that have been taken to create the spectra she'd eaten? We may never know, but for me, her face says it all. Number six, Granny Smith died. Now this one is a widely mentioned secret, if you can even call it that. The only reason I'm including it here is because it's not expressly mentioned that Granny Smith has passed away. Instead, in the last MLP episode, The Final Problem, we're given a view of the future and how each of the main six have changed and aged. And Applejack appears wearing the handkerchief that Granny Smith was rarely seen without, leading to the idea that she's no longer around to wear it herself. As we've discovered, the MLP universe doesn't do too well with deaths and rarely offers a satisfactory example as to what exactly happened. However, this blatant confirmation can't be ignored. Sadly, the fandom has lost an elderly mare who's now remembered solely by an item of her clothing. The handkerchief on Applejack's neck is the closest thing to a gravestone that the MLP universe will offer, but nonetheless, the fandom will mourn the opinionated green mare all the same. Number 7. Unicorn's horns can be broken, perhaps irreparably. Going back to the episode where the apple lies, there's another little easter egg hidden in a traditional scene that gives way to a darker theory. In the corner of the screen, a unicorn can be seen standing next to a nurse with a bandage around his horn, hooked up to an IV, looking absolutely heartbroken. Better yet, the slack-jawed nurse beside him seems to confirm the dire nature of his injury. You can even tell that his mane has been shaved back, which indicates he may have had surgery or some other reparative work performed, since no outlying injuries can be observed. While the MLP movie shows us that a unicorn with a broken horn can still perform some magic, I don't know that the prognosis is as good for this stallion. He's clearly been tended to. It's fair to say that the injury isn't minor, though. He may have even lost the ability to use magic whatsoever, a hallmark of being a unicorn, period. In the MLP movie, we see how Tempest Shadow loses her friends and place in her own village because of her injury. And despite being hopeful, I doubt that this unicorn has a promising future, given the fact that he's an adult, and may very well lose status if his horn's power is never restored. Knowing that makes his heartbreaking expression even that more disturbing to me, landing him in spot number seven on my list. Number eight, the return of Pinkamina. In season 8 of MLP, we're afforded a rare sight in the episode Yakety Sax. Pinkamina returns, with a renewed sense of ambivalence, taking over after Pinkie Pie is told by her friends that her uvidaphone playing isn't very good. And while she responds well at first, vowing to give it up, it isn't much later that she begins sinking into a very familiar depression. Only unlike the first time Pinkamina showed up driven by anger to act out. This time, Pinkamina's at an all-time low. It's later on in the episode that, in the throes of her depression, Pinkamina decides to leave Ponyville altogether on a ridiculous and poorly considered whim to re-inspire herself after her friend's efforts fail to cheer her up. What makes this disturbing is that this is a clear hallmark of a difficult mental illness. What immediately comes to mind is manic depression a facet of bipolar disorder. The irrationality, rash decision-making, apathy, apprehension, discontentedness, hopelessness, 
and lack of pleasure or interest in past hobbies are all hallmark symptoms of a manic depressive episode, which is often part of bipolar disorder. If you've watched my video cataloging mental illness and the main six, you know that I cast Rarity as possibly being bipolar, and Pinkie Pie was thought to have ADHD along with other smaller symptoms associated with different conditions. Now, I can't pin her with bipolar disorder or even manic depression because of the way the symptoms come and go over long periods of time. But what makes this dark secret number eight is Pinky's mindset. If she's willing to leave her friends, her business, and everything she enjoys on a whim after receiving bad news, it's possible that if her friends didn't come after her to inspire her once again, she may have felt suicidal at some point. And, given her track history of making snap decisions, she may have taken her life while in Yak Yakistan when she saw no other way out. Number 9. Trixie Attempts Suicide Once again, suicide isn't a light topic, nor is it really a topic that I enjoy speaking about. But at times, it has to be done especially when it's showcased in a show that may reach an audience that's completely uninformed about its severity. There are many things that can lead someone to become suicidal. As discussed above, mental illness or overwhelming stressors can lead someone to feel as if suicide is truly the only way out, despite this idea being far removed from the truth. And in season six, in the episode No Second Prances, this theme is reintroduced. When Starlight and Trixie get into an argument, Trixie accidentally admitting to something she didn't entirely mean while struggling to explain her position, things get very dark very quickly. Trixie had planned to perform a daring feat known as the Moonshot Manticore Mouth Dive, where Starlight's main job was to teleport her out of harm's way before she was fully consumed and digested by the mythical beast. However, when her friendship is questioned, Starlight's feelings are hurt, and Trixie's world is shaken. She decides to make a fatal choice. Since Starlight won't aid her, and she has a show to host, she sets herself up to do the trick unaided, asking for help one last time before she shoots herself from inside a cannon and into what would have been a certain death. Thankfully, Starlight was nearby to assist her at the final moment, or her decision would have certainly been fatal. Again, we're shown how desperation can lead even ponies to make rash decisions that would have eventually ended their lives. Another deep, dark secret that isn't spoken of directly, but absolutely alluded to. Number 10, Siegfried and Roy cameos. Unlike the other cameo mentioned on this list, the one I'm about to share with you is far deeper and darker in my mind. The main reason being that this cameo is based on two very real people who were touched by tragedy in the prime of their career. All the evidence is there to link both stories together, and it's a clearly unmistakable case. In season six, in the episode Viva Las Pegasus, we're shown two show ponies who run an exotic, magical animal show in Las Pegasus. They use rare creatures to thrill their viewers, one of the most interesting being a striped pink and white prairie dog. What most viewers don't realize is that their story closely mimics that of a team of showmen by the names of Siegfried and Roy. The pair were a German duo who performed various magic acts involving dangerous exotic animals such as lions and tigers back in the year 1967. And on top of that, their main stage was located in the Las Vegas Strip and they often performed at the Mirage Hotel, another direct link joining these cameos with their real life doubles. At first, that wouldn't seem unsettling at all, until you consider the fate of this dynamic pair. In 2003, during a show at the Mirage Hotel, Roy was attacked by one of his white tigers. The damage was extremely extensive, and it severely affected his motor skills and verbal capabilities from then onward. While I wish I could say that this story has a happy ending, it was noted that during the COVID-19 pandemic, Roy's life came to an end after he tragically contracted coronavirus. He died shortly after at the age of 75. Knowing the tragic story of Siegfried and Roy makes these cameos hard to view, especially given the fact that one of them, at some point, would be doomed to an attack by the small white and pink prairie dogs 
that clearly symbolized the tiger who turned on Roy. Combine that with the green pony's clear cutie mark that depicts the iconic white tiger itself, and the cameos are complete and absolutely unmistakable. While we don't see the attack happen, the episode ending on a happy note, the idea still looms in the minds of everyone who's connected the dots. Is that what's truly in store for this duo in the future? We may never know. Well guys, those are another few dark MLP secrets that I've dredged up after a long period of time. Now I do have a few more, but not really enough to do another segment yet. However, if you guys have any ideas that you feel like sharing, please, please leave me a comment in the comments section below. If I'm able to gather another 10 dark MLP secrets, I may do a third episode. Well guys, happy November, thank you for watching, and as always, stay awesome.